In this video, we're going to look at what's called the converse of Pythagoras' theorem. Now, you all know that Pythagoras' theorem states that the square on the hypotenuse is equal to the sum of the square of the other two sides. That's what Pythagoras' theorem is. Now, Pythagoras' theorem only applies to a right-angled triangle. It doesn't work for any other type of triangle. Now, the converse of Pythagoras is, if you like, Pythagoras in reverse. So, what you're looking to do is to prove that the square of the hypotenuse is equal to the sum of the square of the other two sides. And if you find that to be the case, then you can conclude that the triangle you're faced with is indeed right-angled. So, if you're ever asked to prove that a triangle is right-angled, this is what you're going to have to do. Now, you must be given all three sides. And the first thing you need to do is to work out which side would be the hypotenuse if it was indeed right-angled. Now, the hypotenuse is going to be the longest side. So, 23 is obviously our, our candidate for the hypotenuse. So, the first thing you do is you work out, well, what is the hypotenuse squared? 23 squared is 529. Now, we then take the two shorter sides. We find the sum of the square of them. So, you take each side square it, add it up together, and you find that your answer is 538.24. Now, because these two answers do not match up, this triangle cannot be wide-angled. If they did match up, you could conclude that it was a wide-angled triangle. Now, it's not enough to leave your answer, your solution, like this. You have to make a conclusion based on your findings. So, in a statement, say, that since 23 squared is not equal to 16 squared plus 16.8 squared, the triangle is not wide-angled. So you need some sort of a conclusion based on the work that you've carried out up to that point. And that's all there is to it, to prove that a triangle is or is not wide-angled. Now there are four examples here for you to try yourselves. So again, take the longest side as your candidate for the hypotenuse, square it, and then compare the answer you get to the sum of the square of the other two sides. Now, if you wish to carry this out yourselves, uh, press pause, and then I'll pull up the answers in a couple of seconds. There you have it. How did you get on?